All right, take 146. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Tati. Uh, this is Rampage we're talking about. Like, I shouldn't even be taking it this seriously. Um, the show was mid. Mid as hell and what's new. Uh, we did start off with Trio's action. We had the Undisputed Kingdom with Roderick Strong versus Orange Cassidy, Rocky Romero, and Trent Beretta. Trent Beretta, give your girl a call. I need a Valentine. Um, I really... I really wanted to enjoy this match. And it's, I'm just going to say right off the bat, um, you know, it had a little bit of a chaotic beginning. And I didn't mind that. Uh, we did end up having the kingdom running up to Trent Barretta and Rocky Romero. And that left Orange Cassidy and Roderick Strong to be in the ring together. And before uh, Orange Cassidy could even put a, a finger on him, uh, Roderick ends up rolling out the ring because he don't want that smoke so early. Um and also, that little mustache he got going on looked like he got a mind of his own. This little mustache trend in wrestling right now is um really interesting. Now, I really wanted to enjoy this match. And it's not like it was bad. But for me, I just feel like I'm just so picky um, these days with what's going on in these matches. But I felt like hardly anybody was selling anything. Um, those really hard-hitting moves... They're just not selling these things because they want to go from spot to spot really quickly. They want to keep this high energy going throughout this match because we got, what, six guys in the ring. And sometimes they're all in the ring at the same time. And I get it. They they want to keep that energy up. But when you over here getting fucking a spine buster and you just walk the fuck off or a backbreaker and just roll out the ring like nothing happened. It's like at some point you have to realize that people are noticing this when you guys are just trying to go from spot to spot really Really, really quickly and not selling these moves that takes the fun out of the match so for me um i just couldn't enjoy it as much as maybe someone else who's not looking at little things like that now the undisputed kingdom do end up um getting the win here we have warlow and adam cole ringside just being as useless um, as it can possibly be after the match, they do end up attacking Rocky Romero. And I'm just like, where the hell is Trent Beretta? Where the hell is Orange Cassidy? And while uh, our boy Rocky is getting attacked like that, um, it is what it is. They end up helping him in the end. And the Undisputed Kingdom and Roderick um, end up leaving the ring. And they're over here rolling Adam Cole backwards while he's smiling. Like, Adam Cole, what the fuck are you smiling about? You did absolutely nothing. You have absolutely been doing nothing ever since you took that mask off. And you know what? I don't like it. I, you know, for months we've been trying to figure out who the hell was this person under the mask. You know, the, uh, you know, the social media FBI's were uh, working overtime trying to figure out who this person was. And it's Adam Cole. Adam Cole leg is broken, so he really can't do too much. And that's taken away from that whole thing. To be honest, that whole little faction to me, it ain't shit. Before I move on to the foolishness that happened after uh, the opening match, I have to say, I wish it was Roderick Strong back in the wheelchair instead of Adam Cole. Roderick was playing the hell out of that little role he had. Uh, meanwhile, um, you know, Adam Cole is really hurt and he's just boring the fuck out of me. Now, uh, the foolishness that I was talking about. Um, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, uh, they're in action with some uh, two local jobbers, if they were wrestlers, because they didn't do a damn thing in this little match that they had against them. This was obviously taped right after Dynamite on Wednesday, and these two still got that white bloody ass suits on, and they make it to the ring, and I'm just like, y'all think y'all doing something with this little look y'all got going on here? Um, no, y'all should have took that shit off. Anyway, um, they end up having, I guess you could say a squash match because these guys did nothing against them. I don't even know if they even said these, uh, poor unfortunate unfor souls name. Um, so I don't know who they were or whatever. Everything happened pretty quickly and they end up winning. They did get on the mic after that. And I'm not going to lie. When I see the Young Bucks talk, I take my remote and mute. So I don't know what the hell they said. It really was a waste of time. I think that... Um, when it comes to squash matches, it's definitely like not the way to go. You want the Young Bucks to look good. They actually, as much as I cannot stand them, um, they're great in the ring. However, squash matches are supposed to do what? After you just beat up a, a Grandpa Sting and, and Darby that weighs like two pounds, you think you're doing something going against two local jobbers? This was absolutely insane. I'm not sports entertained. Now... 
if there's one match I think that you everybody probably would enjoy would be uh, Mystico versus Matt Seidel. I feel like they've been in the ring before together. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe in WWE, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, they had a really great match. And I did enjoy um, the, the chemistry. They were great. The CMLL guys were ringside looking GQ with the suits on, with the masses. Everybody was looking fresh. And I'm just like, damn, I'm home alone. Let me not get into it. Now, great matchup really great chemistry and i'm looking at this whole thing as in it is definitely a cmll type of invasion thing that's going on with um aew right now and i really do like it because we're seeing different guys that bring something to the table they're all really um talented guys so i really do enjoy these guys coming into the ring and you know giving us some great matches we've even seen some of them on ring of honor if you guys haven't seen it um, we've seen them on collision and on dynamite so i think so far things have been working out well now matt Seidel, he comes out Mystico gets no music or anything. He already in the ring in that jobber's entrance. And that kind of surprised me to see Matt Seidel take the win. Usually when someone gets the jobber's entrance, they don't win the match. But it makes sense. Somebody in the whole storyline in terms of the CMLL side has to take the win. So it wasn't, um, you know, a bad thing for them to take the win. And we want to see where this storyline is going to go. I'm actually really enjoying seeing uh, different faces because we always see the same old people all the time taking the W's. So now I want to see what's going to happen with these guys. Things are getting juicy now. We do have Trouble in Paradise, though. Uh, we have Ruby Soho, Soraya teaming up. While Ruby's walking out to the ring, she has like a note in her pocket that she found and she's reading it. Uh, we don't know what it said or anything, um, but she looks to be confused and um, probably feeling some type of way. Now, they're going against Chris Statlander and... Uh, Willow Nightingale. This was a great match. It wasn't bad or anything, but this is another match where these um, little drama and storyline are playing a huge role in the matches. And sometimes they take away a little bit of the quality because they're focusing a little too much on the storyline. Now, it's not a bad thing, but we just don't see Ruby and Soraya often enough for them to keep doing the same thing. Every time they get in the ring, it's always these little storyline. It's great to see Soraya still got her job because she just don't really get in the ring. And sometimes I just feel like she's just not ready enough. And this is the reason why I'm kind of feeling like... With this storyline, this is definitely the beginning of the end of these two girls together with the whole outcast situation. I really do feel like Ruby needs to do her own thing. She's been held back a lot, um, not just with this group, but I just feel like AEW hasn't really taken a chance on her because she's just, she's just so talented. And sometimes you got to break away from the group so people can really see um, you shine on your own. Now, throughout the match, we do have some issues with Soraya and Ruby and obviously Chris and Willow Nightingale are just thick as thieves and they're just having a great time and I love Willow her personality is so bubbly yes we had Stokely Hathaway um, ringside um, for them as well and I'm just wondering hmm is something going to be going on with him and Chris Statlander it's so um, difficult to kind of like even see something like that happening but we'll see what happens now uh Soraya uh, Ruby, not necessary, not like they fighting or whatever, but just things are not going their way throughout this match. And uh, when Soraya goes to go tag Ruby to get in, Ruby said, fuck it, I'm out. And she just walks off. Harley Cameron goes and say, bitch, like, where the hell are you going? Get back over there and help Soraya. And then Ruby turns around and decks her right in the fucking mouth. And I'm just like, yes. That's exactly what you should do. Obviously, Soraya takes the L for her team. Ruby walks the fuck off. And everything seems to be great. Stokely comes in the ring to celebrate with Willow and Chris Statlander. And then here comes Sky Blue. Sky Blue, our girl Sky Blue. Where the hell have you been, girl? She's standing there outside the ring looking at the girls inside the ring. Then the lights go off. And then the lights turn back on. Is Julia Hart next to Sky Blue. And I'm just like, yes, finally. We've been wondering where the hell you two been. Like, they've been like, 
doing their own thing or whatever and now they're finally together which is what should have been the case this whole entire time i'm so interested to see where this whole storyline is going to go sky blue and julia they're standing next to each other outside the ring they look amazing together while chris and willow inside the ring looking like they're not even phased by these two girls out there and i'm just like wait a minute pay-per-view coming up uh TBS title doesn't look like it's going to be on the line. Y'all going to give us tag team action when Julia could literally be going against any of these girls that deserve a shot at a title? Um, way to do that at Tony Khan. Either way, I did love seeing the show ending with uh, women in the main event. And then we ended off with Sky Blue and Julia Hart. So I can't wait to see where that is going. Now, guys, thanks for watching my review. Tomorrow, I will be doing my watch along for Collision. Come pull up and support your girl. Uh, we have a really great time with these watch alongs. And it just makes watching wrestling, especially if you watch alone like I used to do, um, it makes it so much more fun. But thanks for supporting and I'll see you tomorrow for a collision. Bye.